Now you'll know if you watch a lot of our channel and if you don't uh, and you're not subscribed you need to do that by clicking the link below. Uh, we talk a lot about Star GB and their sliding head lathes. In fact over the last few years, year on year, they've had record years in sales of their machines. Uh, I'm at Contract Solutions in Scotland. These guys are a contributor to that and we're going to find out why. Uh, Jamie, in the last couple of years you've just acquired two machines haven't you from Star. Why did you start this journey? We started this journey because we had a 10-inch Morisiki um, and at the time we were subbing a lot of stuff out to nearby companies and it just got to the stage that we weren't getting the quality, we weren't getting the delivery times, so we took the jump and we got our own SR32. And uh, I mean, how is going from fixed head turning into sliding head turning? Is it, if there's engineers out there thinking whether they should or they shouldn't, uh, why should they and how easy is it? Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot different. Um, I had quite a good experience uh, in the past, in my last couple of jobs. I was on uh, sliding heads, uh, but if you've got a fixed head lathe, then it's a lot easier to do smaller parts, uh, long parts as well. And do you, do you do a lot of the programming at the machines? I mean, we're going to take a look at some of these parts in a minute. Is that done at the machines or do you do it offline? It's all done at the machines at the moment. I'm currently looking at getting a post for it, but at the moment it's all done. Okay, let, let's pick some of these up because this is the reason why you, you wanted to go or you needed to go into sliding head turning. Maybe that, let's have a look at the longer one yeah. and, and the, just tell us what this is and roughly how long it would take to make, what the material is. Uh, it's a, just a long shaft. Um, it's made out of 316. It takes about a minute and a half on the star. Now, on a fixed head lay, that's just no chance. We wouldn't, we wouldn't get that at all. So, are, are you, Is it a tight tolerance job? Yeah, it's, a, it's about plus or minus 025 on the diameter. Um, and it holds it no bother. And will you be doing them in, in large quantities? Because that's another thing with a sliding head lathe. Good for large quantities and, and for smaller these days. Yeah, typical batch of these are about maybe 50 off, but what we try and do is these are monthly orders, so we try and run two or three months at a time. Okay, let's pick up, uh, let's pick up maybe something a little bit, uh, you, you could then maybe associate that with a fixed head machine, but you're doing that on a slider. What, why are you choosing that route? This one had quite a, a tight tolerance on the diameters. Um, and on the fixed head we're having issues with concentricity, so on the star we're not having any issues. Again, this is uh, one part, there is four or five different parts that are a family of parts, they're all similar, so all the tooling's the same, so it reduces setup in the long run. And, and how many of, how many, what would be the quantity of something like that that you would make? Again, these are our monthly orders, uh, we usually do about 50 a month of all the different parts. Okay, and then finally, let's have a look at one of these very intricate parts here. This, uh, this screw. Can you just tell us what, what this is? It's just a tiny little screw. Um, there it's got a little slot in the end. But again, these were quite high volume ones. These were about uh, three, four hundred a month. Um, but again, on a fixed head lay that we have with no chance of making this. And what's interesting here in this story is the fact that your customers were coming to you asking you to make parts and you were uh, and you and you were thinking actually it got it got so common didn't it you thought we, we've got to buy a machine yeah yeah we were subbing out a lot of work in fact the the people were subbing out to we're going to buy two machines and we thought wait a minute we could be buying these machines so we took the plunge and went for it and you searched the market you you, you traveled a lot from here in scotland down uh, to the midlands and had a good look around the marketplace what was your impression of star when you first went in as a new user to slide and headlight you must have felt comfortable in what they were offering not only machine wise but support as well yeah star had uh, really good backup when we went down they talked you through it what machine you'd want we took a load of drones down with us and they said this machine's the one for you um, and no since we've got the machines the support's been really really good and you, you're looking at the machines here, that, that these are 32 J's. Obviously their range is a lot more extensive as well. They've got the smaller machines right the way from kind of 10 mil up to even in fact bigger bar diameters than yeah. this. What was your reason for the 32 mil? Was it because of the, taking those drawings down and them uh, illustrating what this machine would be capable of? Yeah, yeah, I mean, when we took the drawings down, they had some quite big parts that were an inch and a quarter bar. Um, and at the time we thought we'd better go in for one that's slightly bigger, that we can do smaller stuff on. So we went with that machine. Uh, and it, it's quite versatile, as you can see. And do you run the machines overnight? Do you, you, you know, everyone goes home and, and they're still making parts? Yeah, especially the weekends uh, when we've not got any staff in, uh, we'll leave these things running if we've got jobs for them. And to be fair, we've had no problems so far. And I can imagine coming back here in a few years' time, there might be a few more of these machines. Would they, you've got some space behind us. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, a fair bit of space. Uh, we've got some plans. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens.